Remember when Mario Party games were actually fun? When you used to steal your boy Star and watch him squirm during chance time? Man, the good old days. And as time went on and future installments released, it sort of felt like these new games were just cash grabs. Either were complete bombs or had potential to be good, but found ways to be completely off. So as a long-time Mario Party god, put my controller down hoping to see a return to the classic greatness of the series. And out of nowhere, Nintendo dropped Mario Party Superstars, which basically was a remake of the classic games which broke me out of retirement, an awesome nostalgia blast. But just like in Nintendo fashion, they found a way to crumble the game before it ever even released, and dropped only 5 maps total with zero plans for an expansion. Fast forward to today, we finally get a new installment in Mario Party Jamboree that not only promises improvements from the previous installment, but actually has new content instead of just being copies of old games? Does Mario Party Jamboree actually return the franchise to the golden age of Mario Party games? Is it worth breaking out the dice? Let's try not to roll a one, avoid boost stealing my stars, and jump right into this. With me officially coming out of retirement, I made it a goal to play every map and mode to get the full experience, and I want to start with my good. And I'm going to say something that might get me a lot of hate, but I'm just going to say it. The mini games in Mario Party Jamboree are either the best in the franchise or very close to it. There are a total of 110 mini games throughout this entire game itself that range between free for all, 1v3, 2v2, dual, Bowser themed mini games, and the Koopathon mode. And if you want a comparison, most Mario Party games average or hit around 80 mini games in total. So that means this game hits 30 more games as a minimum, which is not only surprising knowing Nintendo, but almost all these games are actually really fun to play. Most of the time, Mario Party devs just copy and paste old mini games from the past and just call it a day. But in the many games I played so far, there was only a limited or few that were copies from the past, like Leaf Leap, Shy Guy Says, Platform Pearl. I mean, these are straight up classics. But most of the mini games, roughly a hundred of them, are all unique and never have been made before. And they can be outrageous and actually require some sort of skill. Whether it was playing a game of chicken, sliding on ice, trying to avoid avoid falling off a cliff, having a snowball fight against a bunch of monkeys, or just making a giant freaking sandwich. I mean, all these games are unique, and they're fun to play, and I've never felt like they were even bad, even in the slightest. I think even looking at the unique Jamboree buddy minigames are probably my favorite overall. These games are used to see who would earn the right to have a Jamboree buddy during the different parts of the game. And what is the best part about them is that each character has their own mini game that is different and unique in its own way, and requires you to have a different set of skills and it just gets outrageous sometimes. Donkey Kong has a rhythm game that eerily reminds me of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat from the GameCube era. Waluigi has a straight up pinball game that reminds me of the old computer games I used to play when I was a kid. And Baby Bowser has a straight up Hunger Games mini game that whoever survives to the end gets him as a buddy. The only downside of this type of mini game is that even though you get a slight advantage if you arrive to see the Jamboree buddy first, there's a good chance you will lose out. And if that happens, it's just brutal. But still, the mini games are top level. And probably other than the mini games, the maps are the most important feature that makes a Mario Party game good or bad. In the last decade, the maps have been utter trash. And maybe it's because every other game has changed the entire gameplay loop and the roll to roll movements were drastically different. But for some reason, they've been all horrible and literally the only time they actually started to be good again was with Mario Party Superstars and that was because they used copies of older games from the classic titles. So when I entered into Mario Party Jamboree I was hella nervous and after playing through a few games I was honestly pleasantly surprised. Not only did we get two more maps than the average map output that we've seen in previous games but they all were pretty damn good except for Mario's Cloud Castle. That map was trashed back in 1998 and it's pretty much still trash now. I mean, if you take a moment and think of what you love most about classic Mario Party maps, what is it? To me, it's the fact that each map is unique, they have their own events that give an interesting concept, and various ways to play. Nearly every map in Jamboree has this in spades. Rainbow Galleria is a shopping mall that has three floors, has flash sales every few turns, selling items at crazy prices, and there's also exclusive shops to give higher level items if you're lucky enough to land on one of those spaces. Goomba Lagoon is an island with an active volcano shooting either golden Goombas they give you coins as you pass certain spaces, or lava which can cause you to lose coins if you pass over those spaces. There's a high tide and a low tide which causes certain parts of the map to be only accessible if you use a zip line. Rolling Raceway is a pretty standard map because of the fact that you're all just trying to race to get to the top of the map overall but there's different spots on the area that actually cause you to make leaps or even go backward in certain cases. And it could be an advantage or detriment based on your role. And yes, there's even other maps that I didn't include, but the bottom line is, as a longtime fan of the franchise, I've watched as game after game, 
they've had struggles with creating unique maps and they always were bland. They had zero vision or at least attempted to be interesting and it's good to see them finally realize that the best aspect of Mario Party games is the damn arenas you play in. And maybe this is a stretch, but the fact that we actually returned to the classic gameplay loop honestly made this game so much better. I mean, I don't know how much Mario Party games you've played in the past, like an old fart like me, but I've been around the block and I played every Mario Party game in the franchise, including the bootleg Mario Party Advance, which was horrible. And every time a new game released, they always tried to change the basic gameplay loop and it ended up always being the same. It was bad. And sure, it's not the worst idea to come up with variants to try to keep it fresh, but when things changed so drastically for Mario Party 6 and nearly every game in since that installment was getting dunked on by critics, there should have been a come to Jesus moment where they realized that the methods they have been changing just ain't it. Just stick to what works. Boards with cool, unique themes each player rolls and you collect stars and coins. Easy. And create variants off of that method. Because you can do a lot of different things with the classic method and just create some variability. And not only does Jamboree do this, but they create unique changes that keep the same feeling of the classics, but unique enough where you get new items and events, and it changes the feeling of the game overall. But not only can you play the standard game mode, Jamboree also included many new modes to play just to customize how you want to experience this game. Want to play straight up mini games? The mini game bay has all 110 mini games in free play, tag matches, daily challenges, and survival variants. Want to have boss battles? Go fight Bowser and Bowser Kaboom Squad, which is basically a boss fight against Bowser with massive team of players where you work together to take him down using items. They even have motion control simulations in Rhythm Kitchen, Toad's Item Factory, and Paratroopa Flight Squad which are quick games to play, but can be fun with people. Koopathon is a massive game mode with 22 players where you compete in a marathon and if you earn coins in mini games, you move up spaces and whoever can get to the end of the race first wins the entire match. Which I will be honest, if you play against computers on a hard difficulty here, it is extremely tough. And I was just sweating just thinking about it. And probably one of the most interesting modes to play is playing with pro rules, which I didn't even know existed. But amongst the competitive community, there is a set of rules that you have to play that force the crazy and outrageous aspects of our party to be at a minimum. So it focuses on your skills rather than luck. So bonus stars are told to you before the game even starts. You can strategize your path. Lucky spaces always give you coins. Item shops have a stock, so you can't just constantly buy items all the time. And mini games are voted on to be put into a roulette. Now I know there are some people out there that absolutely despise this aspect of the game, because it takes away the craziness of Mario Party. But if you're looking for a change up or competitive game, this is the way to go. I don't mind the creativity of this mode, but would much rather play the standard. But I just feel like the fact that there are so many ways to play, it just makes this game feel so much better than it was before. And I just can enjoy it every time I go back to play. Now, even though this game has a lot of great additions, I definitely have to throw some shade when I think about my bet. When you think of the words Mario Party, shouldn't you assume that game emphasizes a group, right? Well, if that's the case, then why in God's name are there game modes that only can be played by one person per console. Because Nintendo is greedy or stupid, or, or possibly both, when especially you think about some of the game modes they added to this game. Yeah, it sounds about right. Koopathon, which has 22 players in a match. Bowser Kaboom Squad has at least eight players in the match. But for some reason, Nintendo decided that you could only play these game modes one person per console. Hey pal. You just blowing from stupid town? This sort of feels like instead of making this able to be played by more than one person, they're just trying to force players to buy it in a completely different console just to enjoy this mode, which is ridiculous. It would be like if Activision released a Call of Duty game that has a three hour campaign, some guns and maps and called it a full game to buy $70. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, maybe I'm losing my mind over here, but why not just make game modes that focus on group mini games and maybe I wouldn't have to go nuts over this basic idea. Did you ever notice that this game feels eerily similar to Mario Party Superstars? Yes, Mario Party Superstars came out three years ago, and it kind of feels exactly the same when it comes to its gameplay loop, the movements of the characters, the animations, and sure, there are some updates to some of the sounds, but pretty much everything is identical to the previous game, including the UI. And even though I know it's not, at times this makes me feel like this is a DLC, because a part of me says, well, why can't you just add all the maps from the Mario Party Superstars and just bring it to this game because of the fact that they're so similar? Especially when maps have always been at a limit when it comes to Mario Party games overall. And when you have two games that are nearly identical, why not just add it to it? And maybe I sound like a loser, but back in the day when you played a Mario Party game, the average turns used to always be 15. Because most of the time, 15 turns always last for 45 minutes, which is a pretty average game. But did you know that in Mario Party Jamboree, 
that the average turns for the basic game mode is 10 turns? You might be like, well, Mars, what's the big deal? What's the problem? Well, normally, if you play a 15 round game, then you have a lot more ability to make things happen if you're down bad. But the less turns you have drastically changes that. And the reason why I'm making this a big deal is because the games are longer with less turns. So sure, there's a lot of things that can happen in the game. There's a lot more smaller mini games they play with Jamboree buddies and the item mini games and things along those lines. But at the same time, less turns means less movement. And sometimes I feel like a round takes way longer than it should. Sometimes I'm just sitting there waiting for the computers to go or whoever's playing with me to go so that I can try to get back to my, I need to move. I need to get to that star. And what's crazy is even if you want to try to go to 15 turns or dare I say 20 turns, the game can change to either be an hour and a half to almost two hours worth of game time. Me and the Golden Girl played a game on the Galleria for 15 turns and it lasted almost two hours. And sure, the cool thing is you could stop the game in the middle, but who the hell wants to do that? Who the hell wants to stop a Mario Party game in the middle of it while you're dominating? I want to win, damn it. And sure, I don't mind the fact that you're adding Jamboree Buddies or these other types of mini games in between, but more turns means more things can happen. More mini games, more coins, more stars. Isn't that the point of a Mario Party game? But with games lasting way longer, no one in their right mind would want to play these massive games unless it's a damn drinking game. Overall, when I look at Mario Party Jamboree, there's both positives and negatives. The maps of this game are on top tier, one of the best in the entire series, rivaling Mario Party 3 with its unique levels that give you so many different ways to play. The mini games all feel like banger. With so many different options, I honestly felt like I was getting different game modes every time I played. The various ways to play and the inclusion of Jamboree Buddies was a completely amazing touch that they added. And it just feels like a perfect addition to the game. However, there are times where I was completely confused on some of the decisions they made, especially when it came to the limited party modes like Koopathon that was one of the most interesting aspects they added where I could only play with one person per console. And if the game is nearly identical to Mario Party Superstars, why not just add the maps to your game and call it a day? But that being the case, I will say this game is one of the best Mario Party games I played since Mario Party 4 or 6. And dare I say, it could be considered one of the best games in the series. Currently on Metacritic, it is rated the highest Mario Party game of all time, so it is a great debate to have. But for me, I'm going to give this game an 8.5 out of 10 and officially give it my Mars Band Gaming stamp of approval. I am completely happy knowing that Mario Party is finally back and I can play these games nonstop and feel content every time I jump back in. My hope is that they add more maps to this game and don't just ditch it to the side like they've done to the past. Nintendo has to prove to me that they know how to use the live service because if they can add more maps to this game, this will be the greatest Mario Party game of all time. But you know what else is the best of all time? If you like and subscribe to this video. If you want to see Langella Kill's review of the Super Mario RPG remake, check out the video on the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Game on.